The Survivor R medium weight armored wheeled vehicle currently used by the German police. A 6.9 liter engine, four wheel drive, an armored steel cabin. Its most important function is ensuring forces are protected during deployments. Armored vehicles were used for the first time during the German Revolution of 1918 to 1919. They were deployed during riots. They would drive towards the target, open fire, and even mow down obstacles. The vehicle's frame construction is designed to break down barricades, for example. Against the backdrop of Cold War hostilities, the tense international situation called for powerful armored vehicles. When forces are deployed in a situation where there is a risk that biological or chemical weapons might be used, we need to be prepared. In the late 1960s, police operating conditions changed completely. Forces were up against new types of threats. Small weapons, like Molotov cocktails. If they hit an armored vehicle, they don't do a thing. Stones, bullets, explosives. Police deployments were now fraught with terror and violence. When there was unrest in the streets, protesters would take aim at the vehicle with slingshots. Today, the risks are greater than ever. Kalashnikovs were powerful enough to penetrate the armor of the old vehicles. This is the story of one of the most spectacular armored vehicles in the world and a look at its 100-year-old history. Kassel, home to Rheinmetall Defense, a company that's steeped in history. Germany's biggest arms manufacturer has been making weapons and tanks for over a century, including the Survivor R, a medium-weight armored wheeled vehicle used in police enforcement operations. It's based on an MAN commercial truck, but has an armored steel cabin. The vehicle's main feature is, of course, that it's armored, starting here with the armored engine hood. The Survivor R is designed for use by police, army, and border control forces. It's tailor-made for their purposes. Known as a Sonderwagen, it has a 6.9-liter diesel engine and can reach a maximum speed of 100 kilometers per hour, cross a ditch that's a meter wide, and climb a 27-degree slope. Basically, the coachwork is a monocoque cabin crafted out of a single piece. We secure additional protective components onto the steel cabin according to the customer's requirements. The Survivor R is specially designed to bring special forces safely to and from their place of operation. It offers protection against ballistic threats from pistol fire to rapid fire rifles. Its armor consists of a bulkhead structure of several layers of armor steel. A bullet can penetrate four millimeter armor steel, but eight millimeter armor steel can stop it in its track and bend it out of shape. The new Survivor R uses a wide range of materials from classic armor steel to ultra-modern ceramic composites. This ensures high-grade protection. The doors are also fitted with splinter protection lining. It's made of a fabric similar to that of the protective clothing worn by emergency services. An additional deflector is installed in the undercarriage of the Survivor R as protection against explosive devices. The manufacturer can install additional protective components customized according to the urgency of the threat level and specific client requirements. The Survivor R can accommodate up to 11 crew members. The individual seats are designed to withstand the force of an exploding landmine. They are separated from the floor and the sides and fastened to the roof only. This means the crew feels less impact in the event of a blast. There is room between the two rows of seats for a stretcher to carry wounded persons. 
The Survivor R's many windows would suggest it was an easy target. Not so. The windows are all bulletproof. They provide the same protection as the vehicle's armor. The robust bulletproof glass panes consist of different layers and different materials that have been laminated. They also allow for good visibility. Former special purpose vehicles had small hatches rather than proper windows, making it hard to see what was happening outside. The roof hatch has several functions. In the event of an explosion, there's a risk that an armored vehicle tips over and the crew would be unable to escape through the heavy armored doors. It's basically an emergency exit, but of course it can also be used to get to the turret. There will usually be a lot of police equipment in the turret, from camera equipment to equipment for use in operations. You can reach it through the emergency exit hatch or the observation hatch. Crew members can also use the turret as a vantage point to get a good view of the surroundings. The Survivor R is the latest model in the series of emergency vehicles driven by the German police. The first was introduced over 100 years ago. Let's take a look back at the fascinating history of these vehicles. After the end of the First World War in 1918, Kaiser Wilhelm II was forced to abdicate and the constitutional monarchy was replaced. Public order collapsed, revolution swept the country, and the ensuing years were marked by civil unrest. Police clamped down on these uprisings with violent means, using machine guns to crush riots. The Freikorps military voluntary units and the Reichswehr took to the streets and tanks to fight armed insurgents. These street tanks had originally been deployed in the First World War. They usually had two machine guns on the turret and were armored to protect the crew. They were ideal for deployments in street battles. The tanks were used in battle. They were fairly bulletproof and could handle ordinary munitions of the time. They could take command of a city square and mow down barriers. The crews had instructions to eliminate pockets of resistance. The tanks would approach, open fire, and plow through them. The chassis was designed to withstand barricades, for example. And once peace had been restored, as they put it, the tanks could be used for ordinary patrols. They were driven through the streets and used to arrest people who were violating curfew or even shoot them on the spot. Historical tanks and armored vehicles are on display at the German Tank Museum in Münster, including one of the few surviving armored vehicles deployed during the November Revolution and subsequent years. 31 of them had been manufactured by Daimler DZVR prior to 1920. The vehicle had 100 horsepower, all-wheel drive, and reverse drive. The chassis was an artillery tractor from the First World War. Two MG-08 machine guns were positioned in diagonally mounted turrets that rotated on ball bearings. In order to save weight, high-quality chrome nickel steel was used as armor material. The vehicle floor was also armored as protection against hand grenades and cluster bombs. In urban combat, fuel and ammunition have to be protected. So one special feature of the vehicle was the armored undercarriage. The armor protection of the vehicle ranged from 12 millimeters at critical places, like here in the front, to over 7 millimeters, to armor plates that were 4 to 6 millimeters thick. The fact that they were used at all against explosives and mines, even the very improvised mines of the time, was highly advanced. The four-cylinder engine with a displacement of around 12 liters produced 100 horsepower. The radiator is in front of the engine. It's oversized because an armored coolant radiator means the engine gets hot very rapidly. 
the radiator could be refilled from inside the vehicle. Emergency repairs to the engine could also be carried out safely during a deployment. Equipped with five forward and five reverse gears, the armored vehicle could travel a distance of up to 350 kilometers. Daimler used wooden spoke wheels, which could be armored with metal if necessary. The iron-tired wheels would soon be replaced by solid rubber tires. By the standards of the time, the vehicle was well equipped for riots and street fighting. At the back, we have the same door as at the front for the driver. The vehicle can be driven in both directions. It had one driver at the front and another at the rear. If the situation escalated, it was very easy to switch and the driver at the rear could immediately pull away at full throttle. The conning tower overlooks the two MGs and is tall enough to allow the commander to stand upright, affording a panoramic view. The top of the tower is slanted for optimal deployment of hand grenades. The Daimler DZVR was the first street tank built specifically for police forces. Hello. All these emergency vehicles were in use during the crisis years of the Weimar Republic, that is, 1918 to 1923. These were years of change and civil unrest, and the vehicles were deployed everywhere. In times of peace, they played a less important role. The Weimar Republic was relatively peaceful. But with the rise of the Nazis and the growing presence of the SA on the streets, and the alliance of Red Front fighters in particular, they became important again. Suddenly, there were large groups in public that needed to be kept under control. When the Nazis came to power, the vehicles were used even more, by the police and later by the Wehrmacht. They were deployed until 1945. Legend has it that one was used to defend the Reich Chancellery. But I have my doubts. It sounds a bit too dramatic. There's a photo of one of these vehicles against the backdrop of ruins. The Second World War gave way to the Cold War and heightened security on the inner German border. The federal border guards needed a vehicle and adopted the Allies' M8 Greyhound, another reconnaissance tank. So, in a way, things came full circle. The new Bundesgrenzschutz, a military-like police organization, had a military tank to carry out police tasks. The West German Federal Border Guard, the BGS, was established in 1951 against a backdrop of mounting tensions between the two German states. In light of the experiences with riots and street fights in the aftermath of the First World War, a decision was made to equip the newly created security forces with an armored vehicle they could shoot from if they had to. This was the first emergency vehicle, or Sonderwagen, the SW-1. The SW-1 was a group transport vehicle with no armament. It was all-terrain, easily maneuverable, and provided protection against nuclear, biological, and chemical weapons. The first German Sonderwagen introduced after the Second World War, its specifications also included all-wheel drive and high ground clearance. The development of the SW-1 was completed in 1961. 450 were delivered to the BGS. The Berlin police were assigned 29 of them over the course of the next three years. Only five of these vehicles have survived, making them extremely rare specimens. One belongs to the historical collection of the Berlin police. In the 1960s, Bant Maas worked on the SW-1 and knows the vehicle inside and out. There were specifications and the vehicle had to deliver. It had to transport an entire team to a deployment. It had to be completely state-of-the-art. In the early 60s, state-of-the-art meant switchable, all-wheel drive, all-wheel steering, and limited slip differentials at the front and rear. The body consisted of a self-supporting hull of armored steel that was up to 12 millimeters thick. One special feature was that the engine was located on the rear left. 
The SW1 was powered by an eight-cylinder Chrysler engine. Fuel consumption was 40 liters per 100 kilometers. The vehicle's undercarriage provided protection against landmines. The SW1 was equipped with a blue light and bore the legends Polizei and Bundesgrenzschutz on the side. The crew consisted of six police officers, internally referred to as Group SW1. This included a commander, four shooters, and a driver. In 1969, production began of crowd barriers so the emergency vehicles could be used in deployments against unarmed demonstrators. Additional equipment also included a riot shield and what's called a dozer blade that allowed it to break down building facades, walls, and doors. It was significant that we were able to shoot from the vehicle. On top, there are two elongated hatches, one on the right and one on the left. These openings meant we could mount a machine gun on top of the vehicle. The MG3 machine gun is built by German weapons manufacturer Rheinmetall. The ammunition used is the 7.62 by 51 millimeter NATO. In 1965, the MG3 was introduced as the standard issue machine gun by the Berlin police. It was only replaced in 1991. Although the use of firearms was supposed to be the exception rather than the rule, the vehicle was fitted with three firing hatch flaps in case the crew had to defend itself. The SW-1 was also used as backup for police lines, when water cannons were also deployed to push back demonstrators. This technique was meticulously rehearsed. Tactical training was important. An SW-1 was never deployed alone, but always several at once. There was a strict protocol to follow as to how they would proceed to the place of deployment, which was practiced regularly, along with dismounting from the vehicle and shooting from the vehicle. Also recovering injured persons. All these things were practiced regularly. In special situations, the crew had to transport injured persons. For example, when ambulances couldn't get through. The SW-1 was therefore also equipped with a stretcher, and the crew's training included transport of injured persons. In the event that the crew couldn't dismount from the side doors or the upper rear hatch, there was another option, allowing them to disembark. There was a hatch below that could be opened if we needed to pull up an injured police officer. So that was an important detail. And then there was this normal exit back here. For the police forces, the emergency vehicle had obvious benefits. With it, they could drive safely to the scene, recover injured persons, and provide protection. With the Shah of Iran's visit to West Berlin and the squatter movement in the city, 1967 marked a turning point for the West German police. The days of the unarmed SW-1 were clearly numbered. It was a vehicle that met the requirements of the time. I myself trained crews for the vehicle. It was fun to drive. It was robust, all-terrain, and it gave you a feeling of safety, which in the 1960s was a very important consideration. The Sonderwagen II was built in 1964 shortly after the last SW-1 was delivered to the Federal Border Guard. The police and the BGS now drove an armored vehicle. The SW-2 could be equipped with a machine gun and a smoke dispenser, while the crew had pistols and MP5 submachine guns at their disposal. In contrast to the SW-1, the new model had its own weapon system in the turret, a 20 millimeter machine gun that could fire up to 1,000 rounds per minute. 
It was a precursor to the current model, the Survivor R, which can be customized with a modular weapon station operated by a joystick from the interior. How is this mobile fortress built? The chassis is manufactured at MAN. The basis is a TGM chassis with a total weight of 18 tons, which is also used in conventional trucks. The frame is additionally reinforced. The series standard axles and transmissions are used. The 340 horsepower turbo diesel engine is fitted. And then the wheels are mounted. The chassis has robust leaf spring suspension and additional dampers on the front and rear axles. The armored cabin is then delivered to Rheinmetall. There it's mounted on the chassis. With the armored superstructure, the Survivor R combines mass production technology with state-of-the-art protection technology. The armored monocoque is customized to meet client requirements with various additional protective elements including protective ventilation against nuclear, biological, and chemical warfare agents. The vehicle armor consists of armor steel and modern ceramic composite materials. It can withstand shelling from a Kalashnikov AK-47 assault rifle and even a Dragunov sniper rifle. The laminated window panes are also bulletproof and provide the same level of protection as the rest of the vehicle armor. The police equipment installed on the roof of the Survivor R depends on what sort of deployment is planned. It can range from blue lights, sirens and camera equipment to a launcher for smoke grenades and tear gas, as well as a weapon station for self-protection against air and ground attacks. Including customization, a Survivor R can cost up to 1 million euros, depending on the fittings and equipment. The interior is also adapted to meet customer-specific requirements. Options include decoupled blast-resistant seats. The seats are suspended from a special construction on the ceiling, so that the crew has the best possible protection against lateral blasts and blasts from underneath. The seats have no contact to the floor of the vehicle or the sides of the vehicle. The Survivor R's entire engine compartment is also armored. The hood is made of heavy armor steel and weighs around 300 kilograms alone. It's opened with a manual hydraulic system. A switch can be used to select open or close. The vehicle is powered by a 7-liter MAN straight-six engine. It delivers 340 horsepower and has a very high torque of 1,250 newton meters across the entire rev range. So much for the theory. Time now to test what the Survivor R can actually do. It's put through its paces on the in-house test track near the former factory halls. This is where all Rheinmetall Defense military vehicles are tested before they're put to use. I'm going to drive up a 27 degree slope. That's one of the vehicle tests. The grounds in Kassel pose quite a challenge. Only very few vehicles can cope with the strain of a 27-degree slope. It will also undergo a torsion test. The Survivor R has to drive up and down this slope. It's a major challenge. It twists the frame. A normal vehicle would simply break apart. The Survivor R has been cleared for the military test track. For the driver, this is a highly stressful experience. First, the vehicle has to survive the torsion track. We'll conduct the torsion test first. This was originally designed for tracked vehicles. Now 
I turn the switch and go into off-road gear. That's a torsion test. A normal vehicle would simply break apart. Concentration is key. Klaus Dietrich has his hands firmly on the steering wheel as it makes its way slowly along the torsion path. He moves the vehicle forward with utmost caution. The torsion path resembles a wave pattern. The frames and axles are under immense strain. We always have a four-wheel drive. We lock the transfer case. In difficult terrain, I would lock the rear axle and front axle. The chassis is under intense pressure. The survivor R groans under the strain. The driver has to ignore the noise and not panic. Under no circumstances should he try to finish the torsion test as quickly as possible. At every point, a wheel threatens to come off. But thanks to the permanent Quattro all-wheel drive, the Survivor R makes it through the test. It must pass the test before it can go to the Bundeswehr. Vehicles that master this course will survive any deployment. The immediate predecessor of the Survivor R is the SW4. In the early 1980s, Tucson Maschinenbau developed a new armored vehicle called the TM-170, which would eventually become the SW-4. Between 1984 and 1987, around 600 of these vehicles were delivered to the West German Federal Border Guard, the BGS. In contrast to its predecessors, the SW-1 and 2, the SW-4 no longer operated in conjunction with other special purpose vehicles. It now functioned as one entity, as it were, with water cannons. It remains in demand as a vehicle for recovering injured police officers. It allows them to be driven out of the danger zone as quickly as possible by their colleagues. The SW-4 is also used to clear roadblocks and barricades. Police Sonderwagen are also used in places where there is a heightened security threat, such as airports, embassies, and during state visits. Deployments where police have a visible presence and are potentially required to use control measures. In contrast to its predecessors, the SW-4 does not have a permanent, but a selectable all-wheel drive. This means it performs well both on the road and off-road. While its predecessor was designed to withstand the impact of incendiary weapons such as Molotov cocktails, the SW-4 offers sufficient protection against ballistic attacks. This vehicle is well protected against long guns and handguns. Small explosives, such as Molotov cocktails, when they hit the vehicle, they don't dent the vehicle in the slightest. Crews can rest assured they're safe. Like the 1919 model, the SW-4 can shift the entire gear from forward to reverse if required. This allows for rapid withdrawal from hazardous situations. Unlike the SW-1 and 2, the SW-4 has a hydraulic dozer blade. The SW-4 is equipped with safety tires. Even in the event of tire damage, the vehicle can continue to be driven for up to 70 kilometers, albeit at reduced speed. The undercarriage is protected against the impact of mines or fire. We also have bulletproof glass here. There's also the possibility, if required, that we can operate the protective covers from the inside. These are then opened electromechanically or folded upwards so that the vehicle is all around armored. The driver and the commander have good visibility thanks to the bulletproof front and side windows. This remains the case even when the covers are in place 
thanks to three angled mirrors. The covers would be used if, for example, the vehicle was being bombarded with paint, Molotov cocktails, or big stones. But the commander also relies on the observations of the rest of the crew. For this purpose, there are observation hatches on the sides of the vehicle and in the side doors. The vehicle can accommodate nine crew members. There's the driver. Auf der gegenüberliegenden Seite den Kommandanten. Then the commander. In the middle is the officer in charge of the multipurpose built-in unit for the G8 machine gun, for example. There's enough space for another six officers to be safely seated inside. So a total of nine officers can sit inside. The small arms manufacturer Heckler & Koch developed the HK-21 general purpose machine gun in the early 1960s, specifically for use by security forces. Modified in 1985, it is referred to by the German police as the G8 and has quick change barrels for single shots, bursts of fire and sustained fire with a speed of 800 rounds per minute. Once the G8 is installed and is ready to fire, the turret is secured at the top and the rifle is operated via the turret. The turret can be rotated to the right, to the left, to the front, and to the back. The angle of the weapon can be adjusted. The fire issues from the fire mechanism. The crew can also shoot from gun carriages in the sidewalls and the rear door inside the vehicle. In addition to the G8, we also have the option of positioning machine pistols in gun carriages. This means we can shoot from the sides, the rear, and the turret, if the situation requires it. The engine is located in the front area of the armored car. The Daimler-Benz engine has a displacement of nearly 5,700 cubic centimeters, produces 168 horsepower, and consumes 23 liters per 100 kilometers. The SW4 is currently still in police service, but it's now being phased out and replaced by the newest model, the Survivor R. It might be over 30 years old, but the SW4 has all-wheel drive, a ground clearance of almost half a meter, and astonishing grade ability. Members of the Berlin police force are taking two SW4s for a test drive in challenging terrain to see how well they can navigate ditches, obstacles, and slippery ground. The vehicle isn't designed for off-road missions, but demonstrations and blockades can also take place in forests and rural areas, and the SW4 needs to be fast and agile. Accompanying the two vehicles on their way to the off-road course is an SW3. The vehicle, developed in 1978, was based on the tried and tested technology of the Mercedes-Benz all-terrain vehicle. It was powered by a six-cylinder engine with 156 horsepower, weighed around three tons, and could reach speeds of up to 150 kilometers per hour. The vehicle was originally developed for military use. Requirements for the vehicle are off-road capability in demanding conditions, tractive power, and durability. As it turned out, the police took an interest in the off-road vehicle. Mercedes was tasked with developing a high-security vehicle that could safely transport police to their place of deployment. They also needed to be able to shoot from it. 
The vehicle had to be flexible and larger than a passenger car. In the early 1980s, this vehicle was an obvious choice. The special protection superstructure consists of armor steel and can accommodate a weapon system. The police weapon MP5 can be fired from inside the vehicle. This vehicle had a crew of three officers, the driver, the commander, and the marksman in the back. He could fire an MP5 from this carriage. An MP5 was permanently in position in the turret, ready for precision shooting. That was very advanced for the time. It was a very popular vehicle. It weighed over three tons, so the crew had to be specially trained, not only in driving it, but also in shooting from it. To this day, Heckler & Koch's MP5 is a mainstay of police and special units worldwide. The weapon is capable of single or sustained fire. One magazine contains 30 cartridges. The armor is designed to withstand being fired at with long-range weapons. The same for the safety glass. When you open the door, you can tell how heavy it is. So basically, you felt pretty safe. It fully met the requirements for a new Sonderwagen. Equipped with a police radio system, the SW3 was mainly deployed at high-risk sites or in security details. When deployed, the vehicle's doors had to stay closed for safety reasons. So a special feature of the car is that the crew could communicate with the outside via this loudspeaker system and microphone. A small loudspeaker is attached down here and a microphone, so that the commander or the driver could communicate with people outside the vehicle. But again, it was really important that the doors were always closed in public. In the event of an attack, an open door would be a vulnerable point. The Berlin police took the SW3 out of service in 2004. Now a museum piece, it's about to be put through a challenging test. Along with two SW4s, it's heading from Berlin to Brandenburg. Here, the vehicles will be navigating some tough terrain. From now on, a Bundeswehr vehicle will take the lead. The crews have no idea what awaits them. The vehicle's limitations soon become apparent. In the three-ton SW3, Bantmas is struggling. The ground is rugged, and it's proving hard to keep control of the van. The same goes for the crews of the SW4. The men fight their way through the forest. The vehicles have reached one of the Bundeswehr's largest and toughest military training areas. This is where tracked vehicles, firefighters, and disaster emergency services practice off-road operations. Encountering sand that turns into a mud trap when it rains, ascents and descents so steep they practically need a cable winch, and routes that are almost impossible to navigate. If one of these heavy SWAT vehicles gets stuck in the terrain, it would take powerful recovery equipment from the Bundeswehr to get them out or the police vehicles would have to pull each other out. The SW3 sets off with Bant Maas at the wheel. The G-Class is considered one of the highest performing all-terrain vehicles ever, but the heavily armored special car weighs three tons and is fitted with road tires. 
The vehicle lurches along the sandbanks, shuddering as it goes. The SW3 is clearly not made for this kind of terrain. It needs asphalt to best serve its purpose. Police Commissioner André Schwarz is getting ready for his turn in a 10-ton SW4. One last technical inspection before he sets off through the military training area. The SW4 is still used by the Berlin police for off-road deployments, such as demonstrations that are taking place in forests. I've switched on the four-wheel drive system because the terrain is difficult. The ground has a lot of give. The ratio is a bit higher so that the grip in the sand is better for the vehicle and I can keep moving. The vehicle first has to descend a 27-degree slope. Andre Schwarz needs utmost concentration as he works the engine brake. A slope this steep is a challenge for both the driver and the vehicle. He carefully maneuvers his way down. The SW4 mastered this part of the test well. But next, it has to traverse a sandy section. If I stop, there's a danger that I won't be able to get going again, that all four wheels could get stuck. I could try to get out with a limited slip differential. Otherwise, it would be really difficult. We'd have to use a winch to pull ourselves out. The SW4 is equipped with a hydraulically driven winch at the left rear of the vehicle. It has a 40 meter long steel cable and an extremely strong pulling force. The SW4 navigates the tough off-road terrain without any problems. But as André Schwarz points out, the SW4 is designed for other purposes. The main feature is that during violent demonstrations, we can remove obstacles from our path with the dozer blade. It can be attached at the front if necessary and used in conjunction with water cannon so that a path is cleared for police vehicles. Its second purpose is state visits, categorized as threat level two. The vehicle is often requested for these cases, not least because of the turret. SW4s are equipped with a weapon system known as a multi-purpose build-on unit, which allows for an optional installation of a G8 rifle or an MP5 submachine gun. The SW4 plows through the terrain, its off-road tires making short work of any large stones, branches, or sandbanks in its way. The Unimog chassis is still moving the special police car forward. A perfect off-road performance is one thing, but safety is another. In the past, what protected police from attacks is, above all, a vehicle's armor. During riots, demonstrators would fire slingshots at the vehicle. They could crack the first layer of the windshield. A recent study shows that attacks against police officers have increased dramatically in recent years. From slingshots to hails of stones, police commissioner André Schwarz has experienced it all. I'll put it this way. I've been doing this for a while, 30 years. I've seen all sorts of weapons aimed at different vehicles from this one. Slingshots from all sides, in one side and out the other. It makes a racket, but that's it. 
The stress test at the Bundeswehr training area has shown how important it is to match the right vehicle to the police operation. International terrorism, increasingly ruthless enemies, and a new generation of firearms have pushed the SW4 to its limits after more than 35 years of service. The latest Sonderwagen is designed to rise to those challenges. The Survivor R. Extreme strain. The whole frame is twisted. A normal vehicle would simply break apart in the middle. The next big challenge awaits the Survivor R and its driver Klaus Diedrich, the 27 degree slope. The vehicle has to drive up and down this slope. If the Survivor R is defeated by the steep gradient, the driver has to let the 13-ton Colossus roll back down again. A U-turn isn't an option. The road is too narrow for that. In addition, the vehicle could tip over. Klaus Diedrich is highly concentrated as he navigates the all-wheel drive and blocked axles along the slope. The front of the vehicle points skywards. Thanks to the extremely high torque of the diesel engine, the Survivor R drives up the slope confidently and without the slightest slip of the wheel. We have to go down the 27-degree slope now. As the six-cylinder engine grumbles away, Klaus Dietrich drives down the steep mountain at a slow crawl. An enormous stress test for man and machine. Suddenly the vehicle stops. The vehicle is designed so that I can stop on a 27 degree slope. Brake, gear, stop. And we could stay like this for a while. Right. We're going down again. It's an unbelievable strain on a vehicle like this. The vehicle must withstand such conditions for several hundred kilometers. The Survivor R passed the test perfectly. Against a backdrop of global terrorism and the growing threat of violence, police Sonderwagen must become increasingly sophisticated. The history of Germany's armored police vehicles began in 1919, a year of revolution. They were deployed during riots. They would drive towards the target, open fire, and even mow down obstacles. The vehicle's frame construction is designed to break down barricades, for example. The Cold War called for a new generation of armored police vehicles. Today we don't have anything like this anymore. We have the latest SW Sonderwagen. It serves the same purpose as this model did. Over the years, violence towards security forces has increased. Police now require more protection than ever. Small weapons like Molotov cocktails. If they hit an armored vehicle, they don't do a thing. When there was unrest in the streets, protesters would take aim at the vehicle with slingshots. Nowadays, many police deployments are overshadowed by the threat of violence and terrorism. Kalashnikovs, they were powerful enough to penetrate the armor of the old vehicles. The Survivor R is facing new challenges. Just as its predecessors provided the best protection available at the time, this armored vehicle is designed to keep security services as safe as possible from today's threats.